Nascimento D'Souza. Your yes. story, uh, of course, you said uh, that your roots are in Sioni. Yes. And yes. your story starts in, in uh, Tanganyika? No, it, yeah, well, it's, it's Tanzania now. Tanzania. But I was born in Zanzibar. Yeah. My father emigrated to... Uh, he, he, was, he studied... Who migrated in your family? My, my father. That means he was born in the 1890s, 1880s? 1898. And then he moved to, uh, after 1890, 1898 or 1896, I think, 1896. Because he, was, he must have been about 16 when he emigrated. Studied where? At, at this, uh, in Atra. In that, St. Uh, Joseph's. Oh, or Sacred Heart, St. Joseph's, no, 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 Saint Joseph's. That, that, uh, Father Leon's, Father, Father Leon's. Father Leon's. Leon's. Yeah. That's where he studied, he did his matriculation and then went to Africa um, during the war. So it was during the war that he was there and of course then... During World War One, was it a German territory then? No, I, I, it was, Zanzibar was not. Okay. You know, Tanganyika was German protectorate. But Zanzibar was the British protector, okay. you see. So he was working in Zanzibar as again in the audit department. And he always he served right through his life in the audit, colonial audit. From there he was uh, he moved to Nairobi. I was I was to six months when we moved. In nineteen twenty eight, nineteen twenty eight. So from that from nineteen fifteen, I think nineteen uh, fourteen, fifteen uh, to 1928, he was in Zanzibar. Moved s several times, probably to Nairobi, Dar es Salaam, but basically anchored at Zanzibar. And 28 moved to Nairobi and was there till he re till he retired. Now I did all my schooling in Nairobi, right from from 1935 to 1944. Uh, and uh, Dr. Vero. One school. Go on school. This was the only very famous, yeah, very famous school. And uh, when during my time, uh, except for the was Doctor Ribeiro there in your time? Yeah, yeah. his family and our family were very close. I see. Uh, and, and, you know, and, uh, and we maintained contact for many years. His son uh, Peter and his brother, his uh, daughter was based in Hong Kong, so we were very close. Uh, not only him, his, his uh, son-in-law also, Manu, Manu Ribeiro, was also very close. It, it was a close-knit family. I think. Uh, and it was a close-knit community? Community, yeah. yeah. So I, the picture you saw there, I'll show you one of yeah. the pictures. You want to show us now? Yeah, I can show you. Uh, a picture While we are on the with, topic. With, uh, you see, there was one person who was very... These are amazing, huh? these are priceless in that sense. Yeah, you, I don't know if you know this chef, uh, Oliver. His, he was, he was famous there. Oliver what? Uh, uh, Mr. Oliver, Mr. Oliver. In the school? Uh, no, no. Okay, 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 okay. That's my father there. I see. And what picture of, is this of? This yes. is of the community. This okay. is where our residential area. I see. And Some picnic or something? Or no, regularly or? we used to have uh, little badminton tournaments. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, it was basically a get-together. Now you are how old here? This is early 30s. Uh, yes. I, I'm, where am I? Yeah. Your way? No, I'm, I'm not in this one. Okay. This is my, my father. You are in the next but one, probably. I'm not in this one, yeah. I'm in, I'm in this one, here. Yeah. How old? This one, I must have been about uh, either six. So you're talking about 34, 1934. Yeah, this is my brother. What's the building behind? This is, this is a Manu, a Manu, um, um, it was his house. I see. Um, Manu Ribeiro? Not Manu de Cruz. Um, Manu de Cruz, no. Manu de Cruz. Doctor? Dr. Manu de Cruz. Dr. Manu de Cruz's father is here. From Saligam? Uh, from Spain. This is his father. Oh. So that's his house? Ma Manu is here somewhere. He should be here somewhere. I, I, I think this was, well, uh, that's, I think that's Manu. I see. Dr. Manu de Cruz. Very interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> well, it's a small world. And. Oh, there's 
this uh, this one was another uh, well known one. There are many of these. Here's another one with uh, Oliver. I see. Here I am. I am in this one. And That's me, yeah. You are about four years old, four yeah. or five, or? Yeah, I'd be a little older here, I think. I see. I'm, I must be about nearing age. So you're um, talking about 1935. Then all these others are here. I mean, uh, the Marcials. <coughs> Marvin Marcial, Marvin, Marvin, Marvin and yeah. his brothers, yeah. the other brothers. Yeah. They are all sitting here, Marvin is here. I'm trying to see. This is before before, before the tragedy that killed uh, part of the family uh, during World War yeah, II? Yeah, that, was, that, that, that happened in about 43. When they were travelling by steamer and by during steamer. the World War, the yeah, Germans started. Yeah, I'll tell you about that. Uh, these are priceless. These are amazing in that sense. Some That's some it. cricket team where? No, this is a this is a, a, the Catholic Jibukana. All dressed up in style, huh? Huh? Really? All of them. All of them are there. Mervin, I said. Catholic Jibukana, Nairobi or what? Nairobi. You see, I I thought that was me. My brother insists that it's him. This one. My father is here. Sometimes. This is. Uh, he was the principal of the Indian High School, okay. uh, Cyprian Lobo. Cyprian um, Lobo. You were mentioning uh, J.M. Nazareth and things like that in the other photo. Yeah. J.M. Nazareth was the Queen's Council, no, later? Yeah, yeah. A very close family friend. For Moira. Uh, yes. Very clear. In fact, his sister at one time was in... Uh, Bombay. In the school. No, teaching. Was principal of the school okay. before. I, I think I, told, I, I didn't get down to my school. See, all the teachers were uh, English or Scottish, Irish. Um, French teacher was French. And she was a classmate of Eddie wow. Lamar. Who is Eddie Lamar actually? Eddie Lamar is a very famous actress. I see. Who was also, uh, I think today they, they recognize her as having sort of been the start of the, the internet. I see. Yeah, I was trying to see if the... So you are talking about Dr. Ribeiro High School? That's Dr. Ribeiro High School, yeah. So then you studied there till the age of? Till the age, till 16. Till the age of 16. And I did senior, senior Cambridge. Yeah. Now, Senior Cambridge I finished in 1944. Yeah. In 19... During the war, during the war. During the war. In 1943, yeah. this, uh, this shop had been sunk. Yeah, Marcius. Marcius. Yeah. And so they, they were BI, it's British India, yeah. who were steamships. Steam, they stopped. Yeah, well, okay. All, all sailing. You see, so uh, the year before, that yeah. is in 1943, uh, Wilfred de Souza. Doctor. Yeah, Wilfred and I, we were very, our family friends in Africa. His dad I saw there. him often, actually. His, his father and my father were very close friends. So these two, Orlando and Wilfred, yeah. Wilfred, we saw them off at the Nairobi station and they went by Dao. By Dao? To Dao. Goa? Yeah. It took them three months all along the coast. Oh my God. Right. So we, I was virtually reconciled to doing the same thing. Okay. Coming by Dao. You see. What would the ticket have been like? No idea. A few so, hundred shillings. A few hundred shillings. Oh, it would be very difficult. Yeah. yeah. The shilling was worth a lot of money. Yeah. At one time it was, you know, even in, in, in relation to the rupee. Yeah. But the, so I was, I d just finished my senior Cambridge and looking forward to having a little, you know, yeah. enjoy myself. My father comes over, uh, we, 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 we had come to a party at the Catholic Chukana. We had no car, we were walking home. And he said to me, I think you'll have to pack. We have to leave in a couple, in a couple of days' time. Wow. It came as a shock. Yeah. What he hadn't told me, you see, what that there were several people yeah. there was, uh, who were also wanting to come to India to study. And they, there was uh, the consul, Portuguese consul, was some Bricornio, Bricornio, uh, Get his surname now. A very uh, close friend of my father. And 
and they must have been discussing this. And this Portuguese consul yeah. worked with the British High Commission, mm -hmm. or British whatever administration. And they arranged for that the ship. The ship's name was Nyasa, you might remember. Nyasa, Nyasa. Nyasa. N Y A S A. Yeah. Sailing from Mozambique yeah. uh, to Goa. Okay. You see. Neutral ship, neutral ship. Neutral Portuguese. ship. Okay. Yeah. So they decided that they, this ship would touch port in Mombasa okay. to pick up only Portuguese nationals. I see. Okay, and take them to Goa. So Portuguese nationals traveling from Mombasa to Goa were permitted. I see. And I managed to get onto that ship. I see. See, with the background that we were from Goa. Right. So therefore, they yeah. to me. Yeah. Um, and that's how I moved, but it was so far yeah. that we didn't have even time. My mother didn't have time. I didn't know where I was going. I they said, don't worry, we're sending a cable. Um, and there was a lady uh, from Saliga, from Harari. Who? Uh, now, I, for the life of me, I can't I remember the surname. Yeah, we do forget names. Uh, yeah, no, it's only, but Je her, her daughter, Jenny, or Generosa uh, was getting married to my uncle, you see, and so they decided to contact them. I see. Yeah. Um, so I stayed. I, they looked after me. I landed in uh, in Goa. They looked after me there, and then of course um, I I was very happy once I was in Goa, but missing my family yeah, yeah. all by myself. Now. You want me to tell you the rest? Of yeah, yeah, please, please, day. please. All right, it's, it's very... So what happens was that I was fine in Goa. Yeah. I have a grandmother in, in Balsar. Balsar, Gujarat. My, my mother's side, Gujarat. my father's side were in Goa. Yeah. My mother's side had immigrated long ago, wow. long earlier, to, to Bombay. Wow. My grandfather was a bus, uh, engine driver. A lot of uh, bones in the see, railways. In the railway, yeah. In those days. Yes. So this grandfather, and he had then Balsar. Balsar, Gujarat, which was maybe Gujarat. a terminus or something of that sort? Sorry? It was a port, uh, it was a railway terminus? It was a very big okay. uh, station. Junction station. Transit station. Okay. For refueling coal and, and water. Okay. Steam engines had to stop there. Okay. You see, so my grandfather decided because he must have been transferred to Balsar at some stage, he decided to settle there. When he settled there, one of his sons decided to start a business. And the biggest dairy in that area at that time was run by us, owned by us. I see. So we had a very big dairy, flourishing dairy. This is all this Anand area and uh, oh, Amul and, and milk and much yeah. Much later. Yeah, yeah. Much later. Much later. This is I'm talking yeah, of, yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, the, uh, in fact, it started slowing down in in the 40s. Okay. So earlier it was very flush. Every every train took all the supplies of ghee, butter, milk from my from I see. Farm, yes. Wow. That was uh, some. Anyway, yeah. so I had a grandmother there. And I had two grand uncles in Bombay in yeah. Mayim. That's my family connections. Yeah. Now, I know I have these uncles in Mehim, and I have my grandmother in Balsa. That's all I know. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I'm now a schoolboy at 16. I'm all by myself. Yeah. I've got some money stitched from my coat by my mother. And I leave. I've got a big trunk which my mother packed for me. And I had a hockey stick. Anyway, I, I was in Goa. I waited till I got had some company. There were lots of uh, students traveling to um, uh, Belgaum, Belgaum for the exams. I decided uh, I'd go leave with, with, them. with, with them. them. So I booked myself in the second class. But when I went there, they said, you can't put that big trunk. You have to put it in the brakeware. Okay. okay. 
and we were doing that in Africa. Yeah. So I said, fine, we can make a receipt. Yeah. And from from uh, Londa, uh, from uh, Marga to uh, Londa, right. I travelled with these. Then from Ronda onwards, I yes. just went to my cabin. I was in a sexy class. As the train was leaving, I saw my, my trunk on the platform. Oh gosh! And all I had with me was a hockey stick, and my uncle had asked for two bottles of wine for his wedding. My goodness! I had a ba bag with two bottles of wine and a hockey stick, and everything was in the trunk. Oh gosh! So I saw it, and there's some there was some old men in my compartment. There's nobody. It'll come. It'll come by the next train. So I got to Pune. I went to the station master. Yeah. I said, you know, I, uh, my truck. I saw that on uh, the platform. He said, well, show me your receipt. He checked. He said, yes, it's not there. It hasn't come. I see. But it'll come. I said, but what? What am I going to do? I, I've got, I don't know anyone. Yeah. Oh, he said, there's no problem. There's, there are hotels there. Yeah. There's a Hindu Dave hotel right opposite the, the train station. You go there. So I went there. Of course, the manager said, said where, where's your luggage? I told him about it. But every train, yeah. every train would, that would come, I would go and, and meet it. You see? I was there one day, I was there two days. I was there three days. I see. And, and there was a coolie. For the life of me, I don't know how, how I used to converse with him. Yeah. But he would help me. We would look. No, no, and I, no change of clothes. I used to wash my underwear and oh, all. Oh, and, and that's all I had. So one day, there was a chap who came and stood by me. He said, Are you waiting for somebody? And I said, uh, no, I'm... I'm expecting, and yeah. I told him the story about my trunk. And I said, yeah. he said, I'll help you. Yeah. Went to the station bus, still no trunk. So he said to me, he said, Why, how, where do you stay? I said, that hotel, how much you pay? I said, six rupees. A lot of money in those days. Six rupees. You come with me. Yeah. One rupee a day. Where? A cool. I see. In Pune. I see. Uh, Gonkur, Gonkur. Gonkur. Or which village? Uh, uh, which uh, village? I don't know. I don't know which okay. village also. Okay. But there were whole there were waiters and and you know mainly waiters. I see. And various restaurants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They befriended me. They gave me change of clothes. Yeah. I took me to the movie very near West End I see. hotel in in Pune. And one of them was a waiter in, in a Pune milk bar. I'll tell you that also. Yeah. So the um, I was fine, but you know I started worrying because my grandmother yeah. could be away. Worrying, I'd written to her to say that I was going to come on so so, yeah. so I said to me. She's sir, waiting for you in Balsar. Balsar. So I said I I don't know what to do. So they said look, if you want, you give us the receipt. Yeah. We'll follow we'll, it up. We'll, we'll check, keep checking, and as soon as it comes, we'll send you a message. I see. You send me that. I said fine. You know? So I caught yeah. the train, and <laughs> that was a long thing, but it was by Bombay. I, some, I asked somebody. I said, I've got uncles in Mayhem. How far is Mayhem? He said, two stops. Now I'm thinking of two main stops. Is it not suburban stops? Yeah. So then I said, two, and then it's too far. So I'm taking a train in the evening to right. Balsa. I took the train to Balsa. Of course, I get there at 3 o'clock in the morning. And so I slept on the platform until dawn. I knew exactly where my grandparents' house was. Because from the house we used to wave to people coming by train. So I walked along the track and I got there. And when I got there, my grandma said, "What were you this, that, there, come on. We, we were still running that dairy farm, although okay. it was running down. But five o'clock in the morning, there was a lot of activity. Do you mind if we just shift inside, Mr. Yeah, just that's for that's the light? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, please. Yeah. Sorry. Am I going too long? No, 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 no. I, not at all, no, not at all. I, that is the reason for telling you. Not at all.
just the fan if we switch okay. off if we switch you off the fan the yeah if there are any more lights if you want to put on it is fine so you said this was your dad No problem, no problem, not at all an issue. Please carry on. Sure. So, so uh, uh, can you come, you know, uh, what do you have, what, you know, she was fussing, after all, she was my grandmother. Yeah, yeah. She was fussing over me. Till, till suddenly she said, said, hey, where's your luggage? I see. So I told her the story. My goodness. And she said, you wait to say you get the receipt <laughs> to an unknown person? Yeah. How could you do that? So I said, Grandma, I, I, I assessed these fellows. Yeah. They, they looked to be, as far as I'm concerned, they were very honest, they looked after me very right. well. They didn't know, uh, in fact, they volunteered, it, it was up to me. Right. They, they didn't uh, insist that yeah. I leave the yeah. seat yeah. with them. Yeah. I, I thought that I should come and see you. Yeah. No, no, go back. I see. So, my uncle accompanied me, we went back. To Puna. To Pune, we found the chat. I think it was a receipt. Went back to the yeah. station. That coolie yeah. comes up to us and he says, Is that a pila wala? You know, where trunk was a little yellowish color, creamish yeah. color. Yeah. It had been there all along. I see. And, and somewhere the station master made a mistake. Okay. You see, it was there. So I collected it, went back. Years later, I had to go to Pune. Yeah. I was looking for this man. I see. In fact, I still remember his name. It was a Cohen, Albert Mendonca. The guy whom you gave the receipt to? The fellow I gave the receipt to. And he had taken... He from was, where? From where? I don't know from where. Okay. I, I was not interested in... And even if he told me, it would never register. Yeah, it would register. It would register. But he, I knew where he worked. Yeah. In the Pune milk bar. Soon, soon after, I met the owner of that bin bar. Yeah. It's a mattress. And, and Mattresses are Goans also. Goans also. And I said to him, you know, there was a chap who I would like to go and thank. Yeah. Because they didn't know who I was. I, I, I enjoyed myself in the company of these waiters and all. Yeah. They looked after me very well, you know. And I want to thank him, you know. And... He had already he had passed away. Uh, no, no, he had moved away. Moved away. And they didn't know where he was. But that made me, ever since then, I did all my, all the entrance exam, uh, whatever I had to do to get yeah. into St. Xavier's, I did myself. Yeah. To get into engineering, I did myself. I see. Nobody to help me. I see. Yeah. But why did you uh, opt for Pune? Pune was a good there center for education. There were only two engineering colleges in India. Really? Yeah. Pune and West Bengal? And Rurki. Rurki. The others like VJT and I, the diploma courses. Diploma courses. courses. These were only two recognized degree. Uh, degree courses. Pune and Rurki. So competition was not fierce. I see. But for, well, luckily for me, uh, you see, Billy Masquerders. Yeah, the engineer. He, the yeah, he was the principal. WX Masquerders. WX. WX was also a family friend. Yeah. I mean, not WX, but WX's sister. She's in the group picture there. Name? Uh, uh, Pinto. Okay. She was Gladys Pinto. Okay. Uh, so she, through him, through her, she said, you must meet my brother, yeah. who is WX Mass Trainer, who I met, you know. Yeah. But he was no longer principal of the school, of the engineering school. Yeah. Carry on, carry on. Yeah. So he had moved and there was another fellow called Tarmurwara. But what he had done between before leaving, yeah. see, they found formerly 
the entry into engineering yeah. was based on your inter science and first year science marks. Right. And, and they found that the, uh, the high scoring marks scoring jabs didn't necessarily make good engineers. Okay. So 1,000 marks were reserved for that. Uh, I think it was uh, 600 for inter science, 400 for first year science. They decided to change that. Yeah. And they allotted 2,000 marks. Your entry point had to be a reasonable entry, I mean, into science total. Right. But thereafter, there was a 1,000 marks. I see. About 100 marks for Boy Scouts or UOTC. I did that two years, uh, university offices, training co. I joined the um, you know, yeah. reserve force. Yeah. Uh, so if you were there, you got 100 marks. If you were, if you were, uh, had hobbies, I see. And did carpentry. I, I do a lot of uh, hobby work. I see. Right from young, I'll show you something. Uh, 100 marks. Sports, 100 marks. Boy Scouts, 100 marks. Yeah. You see. Um, then. There was an entrance exam, English, English, general knowledge, drawing, 300 marks. Then interview, you know, a, a personal interview. So this way they made a thousand marks. Okay. And this, during those years, the maximum number of Goans and, uh, and Parsis got through. Because of extracurricular activities? Because of that. Because, because Overall, yeah. and, and all the best engineers, this Arminius father was amongst them, Vittorin Pinto, uh, I can name uh, Eric Saldana. Um, the, we had a huge bone crowd there. All these Benadim Souza, uh, uh, Rosha, um, uh, who was this, uh, then uh, Billy's brother. Um, Orlando, Orlando, and then uh, there was uh, this Baptist who's uh, a Cyril Pinto, and Cyril Pinto, C.D. Pinto's son, uh, a whole lot of, I mean, uh, I mean big name, big number. I see. So they all got in, as I said, because of this. I see. The, Extra and they, and all, the, all those who passed out during yeah. those years yeah. have made, have done very well. Because they made very good engineers. I see. They might not have been boffins. Yeah. That's why I said, if I, I don't like to, I don't talk about my school and college with her because I was never a top rank guy. Academic. I, mean, only, yeah, I okay. think in senior Cambridge or, or, or junior Cambridge I did very well, or senior Cambridge. Um, but uh, I never liked history, I never liked French, you know, and that sort of thing. Uh, so I never scored yeah. high marks there. And then you went to the UK? Then, when I passed out, yeah. I needed to go to, I wanted some uh, experience. Uh, and I went to the UK. Well, here again, yeah. I was very lucky. You see, I, a friend of my, my father in Israel, who was in the colonial audit, yeah. right, had a sister who worked in a leading engineering company. I see. I thought, this is, this is an engineering company electrical company that manufactured control gear, automated for steel wheel, steel mills, uh, cranes, uh, paper mills, all, you know, very heavy stuff. And uh, they were thinking of setting up a plant in India. I see. So very fortunately, they said, you know, I'll speak to them. Yeah. He spoke to them and they said, yes, we would like to have them. I see. So I got in there, uh, and I, was, I got in as an engineer training. Yeah, yeah. And while I was there, I thought I might as well do uh, another degree course wow. in, in uh, London University. It was uh, it was in a different branch of engineering. No, nope. same okay. mechanical engineering, electrical engineering. Okay. I did both. I see. So, so for so I but I got done it in Pune and in the UK. I see. But that stood me very good stead, you see. Yeah, yeah. Because I did a lot of work. Yes. And amongst the work I did there yeah. was for a steel company. Yeah. 
which got me membership of the Association of Iron and Steel Engineers of America. I see. So when I, what was happening was this company who were going to set up a plant here decided not to because they said at that time, I'm talking the 50s now, yeah. uh, they, there was all this talk of India and yeah, all the yeah, Russian yeah, thing. Yeah. So they decided to go slow on that. I see. And they had agents, James Finley and Company. So now James Finley and Company were looking for somebody because they were agents for a um, North British Locomotive Company, uh, treasures, a whole lot of Scottish cables, um, you name it, track laying equipment. They, they uh, always, a fellow from the RDSO, number one, when he retired, joined Finlay's in, in Delhi. So all the, the, the uh, collaboration with Chitranjan is with our company. Yeah. That was our one of the jobs. I see. The track lane, you know, the uh, rails, not, you know, you, formerly the, the rails were not joined. Okay. Now you have long rails, yeah. you don't have that noise. Yeah. Going ta -ta -ta -ta. So that was done by us. I see. Yeah. I, I brought a fellow out and the plant, the railways. I, that was one of my first projects. Also supplying the first diesel hydraulic locomotive to the government, wow. uh, to the railway. Uh, that, and I was only 26 then. I see. But I, I, but I want to tell you one thing. So uh, what happened was, when I came out, I made all these engineering companies. So the, the company, I, oh, so since these fellows had decided not to set up, they decided to have Finlay's. I was getting restless. I wanted to come back to India. Mm. So I went to the MD. I was very popular with the company okay. because I was, I, I made friends with everybody. I was the only Indian I in see. Bedford at that time. I see. I'm talking of the 50s. In the full city? Yeah. In the full city? In uh, that, uh, Bedford. Bedford, the city of Bedford. Yeah, city of Bedford. Only Indian? Yeah. Only Indian? Only Indian. There was an angry little girl. I see. And, and only Indian then. I see. Uh, so the, uh, I, I was also, I was the captain of the company hockey side. And I also played for Bedford Town. I see. I also rode in Bedford Town. But Bedford Town I played and I went for the All England Trials. This is hockey or horse hockey, riding? Hockey. 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 Uh, rowing was my other, rowing. other sport. But, uh, but I, did, I only did no competitive rowing okay. in, uh, in uh, England, right. yeah. only in Pune. Okay. So, um, so I. I w they said, look, if you, I went to the banking director and said, look, I want to go back to India. Yeah. What's happening about this project? Then he told me about this. Yeah. And he said, ah, we, we'd like to have you here, you know, and we're sending you to America for training. And uh, I said, I'd rather go back to India. I'll tell you why. You see, what happened was there was another senior Englishman sitting next to me in the engineering. And I told him about this, you know. Uh, question of joining Finlay's versus going and staying with the company. And he said to me, look, I said, go. He says, in England here, you will go that far and then go further. I see. You know? He I said, see. my advice to you yeah. is go. You will have more opportunity. You see, here they are all very friendly. Right. Up to a point. Then the lies will come out <laughs> when you try. Which is everywhere. Yeah, which is everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. But there particularly, I would be a foreigner. Yeah, you know? right. So at that time, I mean, things have changed. Uh, yeah. So I went to Finlay's. Finlay's immediately, with my background and support from the company, said, you're, you're in our book, employed. I see. So, uh, and, and so that's how I... I came out to India. I came out to India. It has a long story there, but I won't tell you that now. Uh, so I come, come out to India, and I was, I've been there, six, I, was, I was not number one in the, I'm now only 26. I'm, I'm number two yeah. in my, hierarchy. In, in that particular uh, Unit. business. Yeah. We, we had, Finlay's in Bombay had 
four business main businesses. One was the uh, textiles. Yeah. The second was the import export agencies and all that. The third one was insurance, Lloyd's insurance and, and shipping. You see, this was number two of the company. I, there was an Englishman who was my boss, supposed to be my boss. Charters had a problem I see. with their cranes and a, and a problem uh, which I knew the answer for. I see. Because I'd done work for the steel company in Wales and all that. So the company in England asked me, asked if I could accompany their man to Tartus. I see. And we had an office in Calcutta. So Finley said, no, no, no. Nasi belongs to the Bombay territory. We we are a different. We said, no. You might be so, but you don't know anything about this subject. I see. We need Nasi. So, and Tartus were very grateful. They laid on a plane, one of these. Uh, small, small plane from Calcutta to Jamshedpur. I see. And there was a fellow called Skuka, electrical engineer. Strangely, he was also one of the <laughs> two Indians who were on this um, um, Association of Iron and Steel Engineers of America at that time, electrical engineers. So I solved that problem, you know, and, and came back yeah. to Bombay. When I came back to Bombay, my boss, see, I've been there six months. Yeah. And I'm dealing with all these railways and, and uh, heavy equipment. No orders. I mean, uh, uh, to get an order, because you, you're talking... Uh, yeah, it's a few and far between. They're big orders. Big but orders, but few. Establish yeah. it. It takes you. Yeah. This fellow is apologizing yeah. to this man who was not was actually not senior to, I mean, he was senior in, in years and all that, yeah. but he relied on me for all the technical help. I see. You see? So, but they, and he came out as, as supposedly chief engineer, but he was actually the chief testing engineer. 